I'm super excited to drive this car. How did I do that? What's up guys, welcome to this POV review. My name isn't Max, but it's Martijn. And I'm taking over because Max is on holiday in Greece and he's enjoying himself. So I thought, why not get a really cool car and make him jealous this week? So I got this Hellcat. A car you guys requested hundreds of times, but it's quite difficult because uh, this car, the Hellcat, is super rare here in Europe. And that's because we have CO2 taxes and that means that this car is a bit more expensive than over in the US. But AEC Europe, the importer for Dodge vehicles, got this Hellcat. They decided to bring it to Europe and bring it in full glory. We have a very, very nice spec today, except for the color, I think. White with blue racing stripes. It's not really my taste, but who knows? Maybe the US people like it. And today I'm going to find out if it's as good as the European performance cars and how the performance is, how it copes with the 727 horses. I guess Horsey McHorseface is with Max in Greece. But I'm super excited to drive this car. I never thought I would get the chance to drive it. Okay, where do we begin? Maybe at the front. And you see the new hood. This is the 2020 model, which means you get the dual snorky hood. So you have these two air inlets and they are not the only air inlets on this car because as you can see, there's an air inlet, which the Hellcat is almost famous for. Um, this one is functional. This one isn't, it's closed as you, oh, I, my hands are too thick. And there's a third inlet and it's above the front splitter. I don't know exactly where it is, but I think behind this black mesh grill. You got a SRT badge in the front, which means street race technology, which we are going to do later on. And this is no ordinary Hellcat, but this is the wide body, as you can see. Look at how wide that wheel arch is. It's absolutely insane. And because it's a wide body, you get bigger tires as well, because normally you get 275s uh, all round, but with the wide body, you get 305 Spirelli P0s. And the European spec is a bit different than the US spec. The US spec, yes, it's cheaper, but you get more as standard on the European version, like this wide body, thanks to AEC. And what I love most about the Hellcat, just look at that badge. How cool is that? Um, it's like they went a completely different way than the European brand. When they design a new M car, for instance, with BMW, they come up with a team of very serious people and they think of the names of the, the parts and the transmission for days and they come up with MDCT. Wow, that's really cool. We'll look at how serious we are. But this is so unserious. I mean, the performance is really serious, 727 horsepower, but uh, it's like they took a group of toddlers instead of the very serious people over at BMW because the wheels, for instance, are called the devil's wheels and they are aluminium forged wheels, 20 inch. The Hellcat name, of course, is super cool. Hellcat, come on. And then you have the demon and then you have a Hellcat with more power and it's called the red eye and you get a red eye in there like a cat in need for an exorcist. But the same goes for the hood. Dual Snorky, only, only a four-year-old can come up with that name. Super cool. I really like how this car doesn't take itself too seriously. Uh, we also have the SRT Performance Spoiler. This also is an optional extra in the US, but it's standard over here in Europe. The Hellcat also has a Bielstein performance suspension kit. The brake performance is very nice on this car because we have those huge Brembo calipers and discs 
six piston calipers so we have a lot of stopping power now let's take a look at the going power right there there we have a switch which I just found out just now you witnessed it let's see what that is probably an exhaust how is this going to open I have no idea what's this then oh there it is the 6.2 Hemi V8 supercharged and over here in Europe we use PS which is a German variant of a horsepower it's nearly the same this is 727 PS and it has 889 Newton meters of torque which makes this car super violent I have driven it I've done a few pullaways it's super violent I really really like it we have a cold air intake so they use this to um, get rid of the hot air from the engine and it just sucks in all the cool air from all the intakes you saw earlier uh, fun fact only the right unit is functional as you can see the left one is closed but it does look really cool so guys what do you think of the looks rated out of five in the right top corner also a great feature press this twice oh yeah a remote starter uh, that's something we never get in Europe on European cars I like it I don't know why but I like it I don't know why you would use this uh, maybe because it's fun and that's a very good reason now let's see if that does anything yeah it closes the valves oh thank god I wasn't driving with the valves closed okay so let's get in now the interior this is an okay interior I think um, we have an Harman Kardon sound system again this is as standard in Europe and not in the US it's an optional extra and we have some great seats they even left the tag on so this is the highest standard of luxury Elmo Laguna race inspired high performance interiors um, the leather quality is absolutely insane it's super soft I mean it's incredible that you get this in a Hellcat it's really really nice and you have the SRT badge stamped in the seat with the Hellcat really really cool I like that you can also get a rear seat delete if you're super serious about weight saving and track use but this is quite functional so I would really keep this you also have a U connect system with which you can do tons of stuff uh, you have the performance pages and you can see timers you know 0 to 100 0 to 160 uh, everything is recorded gauges g-force meter engine diagraph with uh, power torque and boost pressure and you have a dyno mode and when you hit the throttle you see the torque and power curves we also have and again this is a cool name uh, yeah at BMW M we call it the MDCT gearbox and we've thought about it with 50 people and the toddler at Dodge came up with here is the name torque flight it's the torque flight 8 speed what a cool name it sounds like you could destroy a planet with a torque flight it's an 8 speed ZF so it's actually the same unit as they use in BMW cars but it just has a Dodge calibration and if you go to SRT mode you see that you have track sport custom and auto auto is just you know eco eco power eco transmission and the pedal shifters are turned off which also gives you a green leaf so that's very economical that these don't work I don't know why let's go to custom mode because you really need custom mode uh, you can go to custom setup here you can see what you can choose so um, 
you can choose between 500 and 717 horses while black key is in use okay guys what color is this key is it black no it's not what is this black key are you kidding me red key wow what <laughs> How did I do that? I have no idea. Okay, now we can select 717 horsepower, transmission in track, so that's the torque flight transmission, pedal shifter turned on, very uneconomical, but we are going to do it. Traction in sport, which is super sporty. The ESP really in sport is insane. You can do crazy stuff. Normally with ESP sport modes, I hate them, but this one, yeah, it saves you from death, but that's it. Um, suspension mode in sport, that's the Bielstein suspension and steering also in sport. I think in track it's a bit too heavy and in street it's just a bit too, you know, showboaty. Um, so that's my custom setup. We also have race options. I could talk about this system all day. Uh, you have a launch control and you can set the RPM for the launch control. I do, however, have a problem with the launch control function, uh, which I'll show you in a moment. And you have line lock for insane burnouts, race cooldown to cool down the engine, and you can let the shift light uh, come up at a certain RPM. Okay, so that's it. And all there's left to do is drive it. So. Let's go and drive this little cat. Sun has come out. When I did the Autobahn video, it was a bit damp, uh, which <laughs> was quite tricky because even at like 100 kph, it started spinning. Uh, so it was quite intense, I would say. Uh, let's go to manual mode for the gearbox and shift down a few times. Oh, you hear that supercharger whine? Oh, Jesus Christ. This is very serious power, guys. It's insanely quick. I mean, the power delivery at first, there's like not that much, but when the supercharger kicks in and you hear that whine, it's unbelievably powerful. Oh man. You really have to get used to this car. It's not like with an Audi RS that you just get in, put it in D, put it in dynamic and just floor it. This car demands respect. Oh man. why the rpms go up that fast that's because the rear wheels are spinning and spinning and spinning it's like a little cat from hell jesus christ okay let's go to auto mode you know there's a bit of there's a sunny patch over here so let's see what happens <laughs> that, that's just a lot of smoke Jesus Christ. So, as you can see in sport mode, ESP, it won't do anything but uh, prevent you from turning all the way around. But that's it. You have to do it yourself. It's super entertaining. I haven't laughed like this uh, for quite a while in a European performance car. But there is a huge downside to all this, and I'm going to talk about that 
in a minute on the autobahn. So please be patient. It, it's amazing how the calibration of the Torque Flight ZF 8-speed has been done by Dodge because in track mode it just hammers in the next gear. It's so aggressive. The whole car is so aggressive. I really like how they did that because with any other car we always go for the uh, highest gear changing setup, so the most ferocious gear changing setup. But with this one you only go to track mode when you really are going to gun it. Otherwise it's just too aggressive. And I love the fact that in 2019 I'm using the word too aggressive because aggression is a bit fading away. I guess with stock cars. That's the thing with this car. It doesn't feel like it's stock. It's like you have a V8 Challenger and you just fit a big ass supercharger to it. Normally stuff like that is done by crazy tuners but Dodge decided to do it themselves. And as I said this isn't even the most powerful Challenger. You also had the Challenger Demon. You also have the Challenger Red Eye in the US with 800 horsepower. We don't get those models over here in Europe but AEC is going to uh, improve on that because they're coming with their own version of the Hellcat. It's called the XR. It's coming out in a few months and it's going to have, wait for it US people, 888 horsepower. So that's going to be quicker than the Demon. Okay. I was talking about the launch control, I think, but I got distracted. That's the thing with this car. You get distracted quite easily. Okay, so launch control uh, with ESP Sport. The launch control takes over the ESP. So you get grip in the first gear. It just manages the power. But at a certain point, it just says, okay, now you're on your own and it just releases the management. So you just press the launch button, left foot on the brake, give it some gas and release. You know, managing, managing. Woo, that one was quite quick. Last time I did that, I was in a cloud of smoke you wouldn't believe at like 80, 90 kph, it just started spitting up the rear tires and it was absolutely hilarious. Uh, so we didn't actually have very much wheel spin. And that's the crazy thing about this launch control system. It keeps fine tuning the power in uh, such a way that you get the best start. And that's how a launch control system should work because many brands choose to uh, completely turn off the ESP system when they use launch control, which doesn't make any sense. When you use launch control, you want the fastest start. And that's a really good choice by Dodge because when you don't use it in sport mode, you just have a ferocious burnout, as I'll now demonstrate. But maybe it's because the road is a bit drier, but let's see. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the smoke I was talking about. I mean, I wasn't even moving. It's just spinning and spinning and spinning. You don't need that line lock system. You don't need any braking to do a burnout in this insane cat. Ah. Oh. I love this car. The driving experience is so much fun. And I love the fact that we can now get this in Europe. Okay, so next on is handling. We have the Bielstein suspension kit. 
and in sport mode it's actually pretty nice because it's quite a heavy car but with this suspension kit it feels I'm not going to say it's sharp but the handling isn't all that bad I have driven a stock Mustang GT which I just don't like handling wise this is just a big lumpy lion I don't I'm not even going to call the cat anymore but it it moves around pretty nicely I'd, I'd say it's not what this car is about but I like the feel you get the steering feels nice it's nicely weighted um, turn in you know there it goes really good with muscle cars and US cars there's always a huge delay and it starts leaning in the corners not with this one super nice you can also get this by the way with a six-speed manual but you shouldn't because I've read that it's not really that good and I can tell you that this torque flight is really good okay now enough with going up Dodge's ass because we are now going to the Autobahn something we Europeans love going to the Autobahn and testing cars because over here we don't really care about quarter mile times or 0 to 60 times we care about 100 to 200 that's what we love and then it starts falling apart I guess because the quickest stock car we've done since we do these measurements is the Mercedes AMG GT 63S 4 Matic Plus with 639 horsepower. Remember, this one has 727 horsepower, but this is actually slower. If you want to see the video, click up here and see how much slower it actually is. Um, I'm now going to show you. There's the speedometer. I'm going to turn on the GoPro. You know what? It's actually, it has dried out a bit, so I'm going to do a new measurement and see if I can improve on that number I just did. This is our draggy GPS performance box, by the way. Super accurate, 10 hertz GPS. If you want to get one of those with a nice discount, use code HELLCAT and go to ignitioncollection.com. That's the device, by the way. All right, we are in custom mode. Yes, everything is set up right. Here we go. it's quite a bit slower than the Mercedes AMG GT 63S which is bigger I do like those brakes come on man go to the right man this is Jesus these Brembo's have lots of feel through the pedal and the performance when you step on it is really nice, especially at high speeds. The, the car doesn't start moving around, you know, aerodynamically, this is like a brick. And that's why that time isn't really that good because of aerodynamics. But it is hugely entertaining. As you can see, but it should be able to do 320 but these Pirelli P0s have a Y 
uh, speed rating so they are limited at 300 kph but that was impressive i think I, it's not 727 horsepower fast i think that's a huge disappointment but come on it's super entertaining the sound of the supercharger the the growl from the exhaust they are so overwhelming I, I i just love this car i mean it has been a bit of a disappointment performance wise because i'm just not able to get the zero to 100 times of three and a half seconds because i just don't have any grip ever and the 100 to 200 times was a bit disappointing but the experience the driving experience is unlike anything else i think this is the most entertaining and thrilling driving experience a stock car has ever given me so guys thank you so much for watching i hope i did an okay job replacing Max today. Go watch this Geiger Mustang video by Max if you want to see more of this supercharged American fun and go check out this POV reviews playlist if you want to see more reviews. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.